in general, the best way to bind a book is to stitch it. And for that, one usually needs signatures that are folded um, so that one stitches through the fold. However, that's not always possible. And you may have a document that you've downloaded off the internet or printed out yourself or whatever, but that is that consists of single sheets that it's not actually not possible to fold. And this is generally known as perfect binding, sometimes also called limbac or double fan binding. And so in this video, I'm going to show you how we do this. I have here my printed out sheets. And I also have two end pages, which I've already folded. So the end pages are double the size of the sheet. This is A4 and this is A3 folded. And so I put one at the front and one at the back. And what I'm going to do then is basically glue the spine with mull over it. So that's what I show you in this video. One other thing to note is that perfect binding works best if the grain direction is correct. That means that the paper will fold more easily in the length than in the width. Um, usually printer paper is in the length, usually. Um, but that's, yeah, you can sort of get away with it more easily if you're going to, with the wrong grain direction, if you stitch the book. But with a perfect bound book, you will find that it becomes wobbly on the spine if the grain direction is incorrect. Um, that's because it gets wet, and that's what happens when, when the wrong side gets wet. So what I'm going to do now is I have my two end sheets um, at the front and the back of the book, and I'm going to place it between, obviously if you have a press, that's, that's great, um, but for this project I'm going to try and keep it very exact. And I'm going to place it between boards, which I will then fasten with G-clamps to make a makeshift press. I place the book block down on the board with, say, about 5 to 8 centimeters protruding on the side. And then I place my other board down over it. It's important to try and keep this absolutely exact here. That can be a little bit tricky, but yeah, one can practice it. I'm then going to put this on something and fasten it with my clamps. I'm not going to be trimming the edges of this book. Um, normally one could, but that's a bit too complicated to explain if you don't have the right equipment. I'll do another video on options for, for trimming spines another, uh, not spines, trimming the edges another time. Um, but that means it's also important to try and keep your pages as exactly aligned as you can. Okay. Once I've got this pressed, the point of pressing it really is just to hold the pages firmly in place. I place this upright. I'm going to let it stand against. Something to let it stand against. There we go. Um, and I now have my pages in place on my spine, ready to glue. I also need a piece of mull. Um, I discuss equipment more and materials more in um, the series I did on case binding, which I'll link to. This needs to be just slightly shorter than the length of the book um, because we're not going to be trimming the edges. If we were, it wouldn't matter. Um, and it needs to have, say, a couple of centimetres on each side that we will glue down. I'm also using PVA glue, and I'm using a fairly thick PVA glue. Um, 
and for for this it's having it thick is is quite important what i do then is i'm going to basically this is where the name fan comes from i'm going to push it over so that the pages open out ever so slightly and we make sure that we get a little bit of glue on the edge of each page so holding it down like that i take my brush for a thin book like this i could use a thinner brush but it is what it is um, and i basically go across making sure that i get preferably fairly evenly and a little bit of glue on on each page uh, don't try not to get glue, glue on the edge here so always work outwards and then once i've done that i fan it the other way and you don't want to put too much more glue on but you basically um, brush it down to ensure that the glue has got into all of the pages. For this, it's also important to have a brush with fairly thick bristles because it, it really, um, yeah, it gets into all the little slight creases. Okay, when you've done that, just I, I pull it together because I don't want it opening up too much for the glue to go to places where it shouldn't. And I then also just do a thinnish layer of glue along the side. You don't want too much glue there. Um, okay. And when I've done that, always have a damp cloth around to clean off your hands. Um, I'm going to place my mull down and basically pull the mull down onto the sides. If the grain direction was incorrect here, you would find that this would become much more wobbly. Uh, I don't know if wobbly is the right word, but um, yeah, it would not be straight. And then we just do another layer. And once I've done that, I run my fingers down the sides to make sure that there's no glue running down there that would dry and form a hard bump. And I then leave it for a few hours until it's dried. Also, it's important to let it dry standing upright because if it's lying on its side, the glue will run down and form a ridge on the edge. So it's best to leave it like this for a few hours. At this point, I could trim it if I was going to do that. I'm not in this video because I'm assuming people may not have the means of doing that and I'll address that at another time. Um, but if I were to trim it, this is when I would do it. What I am going to do now is round it slightly. It is more difficult rounding a glued bound book than a stitched book. Um, but nevertheless, because that's what the cover is going to be like, I'm going to round it. And to do that, I use a hammer. I'm a bit wary of doing it with my camera set up, so I might not press as hard as I normally do. Right, I did most of the rounding away from the camera so that I could bash it a bit harder. Um, but it's now, you can see it's somewhat rounded. 
You can also do straight back books, but then the technique for the cover is different. Um, and I need to practice that a bit before doing the video on it because I don't often do it. Now this step is optional, but what I'm going to do is add head, band, head and tail bands, um, which are largely decorative. Here I am using some commercially made headbands that I happen to have. Um, but in my video on the, in the case bound series, I demonstrate how to make simple cloth headbands. Um, so you can look there if you like. Traditionally, headbands are stitched, um, but with case binding, they really have a purely decorative function. Right, our book block is now ready. And what we need to do is make the cover. Now, I'm not going into such great detail this time because I've done this before in other videos and I'll link to them. Um, but the one thing I am going to be doing differently is making a quarter bound, what's known as a quarter bound cover, which means that I am going to use a separate strip for the spine. Now, usually quarter bound or half bound binding uses leather, well not usually but often it does, um, but I'm just going to do this method with paper. This is Wibberlin which is a very strong paper that's used for binding. I'll put a link down as well. Um, and then I'm, for the front and back covers I'm going to be using this paste paper that I've made. So that's slightly different. Um, the other thing is that I'm going to be using slightly different measurements to what I used in the video for case binding. Um, I've made the spine board, which I did by measuring the width of the spine and adding four more millimeters. So this spine board is four millimeters wider than the spine. The boards are eight millimeters longer than the book block and three millimeters more na narrower than the book block. And then I will also leave a seven millimeter hinge, gap at the hinge. Once the boards are attached, I'm going to measure where I want my other paper to come. Um, in this case, it's going to be four and a half uh, centimeters across. So what I'm going to do is actually, with my bone folder, I'm going to Just draw a line to show where I'll go, and it will come just over there. Make sure it's the same on back and front. I'll then take my paper. Smear it in. And then you need to position it just over the line that you've drawn with approximately the same space on both sides.
and you can check that they are. Yeah. The first one is should have been further out. In fact, my mark is there. I wasn't very precise. Um, so perhaps I'll make that the back of the book. But yeah, that's something to watch out for. That one puts these on pretty precisely. So I will now put this under a plank between planks and under a brick, and let it dry, and then we case in the book. Now that my cover is dry, I'm going to case the book. I'm not going to describe this in detail because I've already shown the process elsewhere. And I then put it in the press. Okay, and here we have the final book that's come out of the press. Um, as you can see, it opens flat nicely, and it's firmly glued at the spine. So I wouldn't recommend it for a book that you were going to be using daily or a really important book, um, but for a thesis or a whodunit or some document that you want to keep in a better form, it's quite a useful thing to know. If you found this video helpful, then please like and share it, and please let me know if there are any topics that you would like to see addressed.